this podcast is on the second part of what was done in the past month it's on dual energy ct the title of the podcast is why is dual energy ct not used widely yet so i want to discuss on these three three points to briefly cap recapture what is dual energy ct where is dual energy ct thriving and then want to spend more time on what are the reasons holding back dual energy ct from wide use dual energy ct is often called spectral ct if the generation of two x-ray photon spectrum however varies among ct manufacturers there are different methods of obtaining dual energy ct currently single source with fast tube voltage switching also called as kv switching single source with dual detector layers dual source with dual detector arrays and dual scans with two different kv settings this image kind of captures the three main methodology different methods used to arrive dual energy spectrum the fourth being the the regular ct methodology however doing twice over this same area uh, with two different k- tube voltage so the three main distinctly different method is the dual source ct where we have two x ray tubes which can be set at two different tube voltage therefore two different energy beam spectrum is obtained automatically the second one is the single source however the x ray tube can be switched between two different kv at every instance creating two energy beams the third method is having a single source however it a, a detector which is dual layer the front layer absorbing majority of the low energy um, photons and the second layer absorbing the high energy spectrum thereby differentiating to energy the fourth method is simply the the current methodology however scanning at two different times what are the advantages of dual energy ct one of the main advantages it reduces it is good in better delineation of structures it can differentiate different structures it's also effective in differentiating structures and it's good for follow up and treatment and so forth it is one of the so- sought after application possible due to technological advances it is also often used for reducing metal artifacts and so forth then why is it then dual energy ct is not used widely we see a number of publications increased number of publication in the past 5 to 7 years and every clinic would talks highly about dual energy ct however when we look back across the spectrum we still see dual energy ct being used very in a limited resources and the purpose of this podcast is to examine what are reasons which are holding this dual energy ct so what is the current usage there are approximately 8400 sites in the us which perform ct studies however among them are only about 40, 400 sites or less than 5% have premium ct scanners when i say premium ct scanners we're talking about dual source ct such as the siemens flash force and so forth wide detector ct such as toshiba 320 philips 2256 or g 160 mm coverage and so forth which are which are suitable for performing dual energy ct studies let's examine how is dual energy ct done clinically if you examine those sites which have these premium scanners which are capable of dual doing dual energy ct only few ct studies use dual energy ct protocol and the way it's done is the raw dual energy ct data is first acquired then the technologist can reconstruct various energy data sets by the technologist who have additional training all the data sets are presented for review and it's upon the radiologist to have to navigate various data sets in a limited amount of time 
in fact it is some time it's time consuming to switch between the data sets for example at Hopkins less than 10 percent of our CT studies are performed in a dual energy CT methodology here is one representation of the data sets from dual energy for dual energy CT from a dual source CT scanner on the top panel you see the acquisition images acquired at 140 kV and the second panel showing 100 kV with these two energy sets you can one can create what is called as quasi mono energetic images at any energy between 140 and 100 one up to 140 kV then you can create what is called as a blended image you can also have a color coded which is shows iodine in a blue and calcium in red very near clear distinction and you can also remove the bones and display just the images after the bone removal you can also have iodine quantified by orange color and visual and enhanced image after iodine subtraction in fact that is in fact touted for um, one of the application of dual energy CT to create non-contrast or um, non-contrast um, images therefore in multiphasic studies one can avoid that non-contrast series that's another application finally you also can display it as a fusion of color coded iodine image and unenhanced image so what I'm trying to convey here is like instead of two data sets now you have nine panels of data sets which are which can be viewed for your convenience here is an example of our one of our prior CT scans where we have more than quite a number of protocols listed on the system the manufacturer have this all these dual energy protocol but the one shown with the black circle are the one is commonly used so even though we have the scanner is loaded with more than 30 dual energy protocol we use about 10 protocols routinely here is one example which where the dual energy CT is is quite advantageous and routinely used is for the bone removal application it is touted that the accuracy of segmentation is as high as 95 percent compared to a single energy CT scan and the image processing is quite simple and is user independent therefore it's a very effective in terms of clinical protocol therefore it's used routinely in to some extent the dual energy CT with the spine protocols seem to have some unique advantage patients when they with metal hard hardware scanned on a dual energy source CT provides the user the effect data sets which can effectively remove this metal artifact adapting metal artifact reduction shown here some of these very streak artifact can be avoided by basically creating data sets at various energy le levels and at some levels it can it shows a diminished beam artifacts so it's end up kind of sometime end up 12 to 15 data sets created at various energy levels here is another protocol used typically for research protocol it's called the pancreatic cancer protocol research since it's a research protocol the investigators tend to create quite a large number of data sets in fact here in this example nearly 30 data sets are created leading some time to too many images to review so what are some of the limitations of dual energy city first and foremost it's costly which means you need to have a premium CT scanners to do this dual energy CT that may be one of the contributing factor second most importantly it requires additional time for processing the images and also reviewing the images so therefore some time it may be not necessarily suitable for most smaller to medium sized hospital and that may be one of the reason why it's not used widely the other caveat is there is no extra reimbursement for physicians using dual energy CT images so now with no additional reimbursement but they still have to navigate with a lot of data sets maybe holding some of the users to ad widely adapt the dual energy CT studies 
The other thing is what is holding this technology off from taking off is scanner cost, reimbursement, and it's limited to niche application right now. It requires additional processing time. Additional training is required for the technologies to create all these data sets. And sometime, because the premium CT scanners, it requires higher maintenance and service cost. And as of now, it also have a lack of vendor independent platforms. So a dual energy CT images created on a platform A may not be readily able to use it on a platform B. So a patient coming from a center with using a platform A may have difficulty showing his or her images to a physician on a, who uses a platform B. Currently suitable for a premier hospital, uh, so therefore may be contributing to not this not widely used age of dual energy CT. The other thing which is holding back is currently the data sets for each energy has to be reconstructed and viewed separately. That leads to a time consuming since reviewer has to go back and forth between the image data sets. So in one word Dual energy CT technology appears is 2016 or 17, but image display and workflow is, is still in 2006, 2006. So there is a lack of between the technology, what it can do, and the way it is displayed and workflow, which is what may be contributing to this technology being held back. The other challenges regarding the cost of the premium CT scanners. There are a, for premium CT scanners capable of dual energy CT, the cost can be greater than one to one and a half, one one to one point two million dollars. And dual energy CT study is not possible with conventional CT. If you had to do a conventional CT, then they had to do a two scans, that can increase radiation dose exposure to the patient, and that may also one of the factor why they do not, it's not used so widely. Whereas a conventional CT is very cheap, such as a 64 slice or 80 slice scanner, cost about less than half a million dollar or less. In fact, a 16 slice CT scanners or a refurbished scanners can be as low as 400,000 or 0.4 million scanners. Conventional CT supports almost all routine radiological and cardiological application, and 64 slice scanner can also do dual energy CT application. However, as I said previously, one of the only way to do is like to scan the same patient twice at two different energies and that can increase concern about the radiation dose exposure and so forth. The other challenges for dual energy CT being held back is the decreasing insurance reimbursement. The Deficient Reduction Act of 2005 resulted in a major reduction in reimbursement for imaging studies. Reimbursement cut demands higher volume of CT readings to make up the difference in lost revenue. Therefore, a dual energy CT studies which has increased number of wall data sets may be a negative connotation for a reader who has to do lot of high volume readings. Affordable Care Act of 2010 also had some shifting the payment model and also the bundling of these procedures also has decreased further reimbursement. All these things in, in together may be contributing towards a um, reason for holding this technology back. One solution what that can help dual energy CT further is what can be done, examining what can be done. For example, how did 3D and MIP image became so popular? One has to demonstrate dual energy CT can make a difference. I'm going to repeat this slide. So the next question is what can be done? One way is to look example of how did a MIP or 3D imaging became popular. Second, it is important to demonstrate dual energy CT can make a difference in clinical diagnosis which is efficient and also cost effective. Third, it needs more champions. You know, the large, the sent a few, a lot of the publications are coming from few centers who have champions to do these two energy cities. So you need a lot more champions to push this energy in a wider usage. Plus, 
there is a consistently there is a need for advocacy for increased reimbursement for dual CT. Once that happens, there will be a floodgates will open. For example, in cardiac CT, cardiologists are comfortable examining 3D images of the heart. So therefore, instead of looking through all the actual images, they can let, just look at the 3D images of the heart. And that cuts down a lot of the uh, reader's time. So dual energy images should be few, simple, and be effective to read and provide in a way it can be read very effectively in a very short period of time. So what is needed? One of the things which is needed is we need a post-processing methodology easier. We need to minimize the number of data sets presented for review. And we need a paradigm shift in the way the workstations and the way the images are displayed for these dual energy CT data sets. There's a need for new workstation with technology similar to windowing level up and down that can allow clinicians to thumb through images at various energy rather than having to switch back and forth between energy sets. Clinician can modify image of interest through various energy so that enables them to improve the diagnosis and then it can start getting more wider uh, acceptance. What are some of the roadblocks and Repeating, so let's talk about the roadblocks and how it can be removed. First and foremost, one need to recognize additional work needed with dual energy CT. Second, it, it needs increased reimbursement to differentiate from the regular CT that can be, that can lead to wider acceptance. Third, with dual energy CT, there's a potential for doing increased quantification of the studies. Therefore, emphasizing quantification versus the, cons the current subjective evaluation can help dual energy CT being widely used. Finally, it also needs the cost effect to dual energy CT scanners. And workload on CT users has to be decreased. So what are the solutions needed to make sure that dual energy CT studies are widely accepted. First, there needs to be a streamlining strategies to improve the workflow efficiency. Second, there's a need for developing vendor independent dual energy post processing workstation, which works seamlessly and integrate into packs. Because each vendor has different approach to dual to do dual energy CT and cross platform accuracy is required, is, is need to be demonstrated. Third, it requires decrease the associated cost such as the training of the technologies and post processing cost. Finally and foremost, there needs to be a simplistic design of image processing which is key to further pushing the technology for wider acceptance. Thank you.